Making stylized grass fields in Blender is super easy with the help of geometry nodes. And here's how to do it. Add a plane to create a simple landscape. Scale it up and apply mesh transformation. In edit mode, give it a bunch of subdivisions, like a hundred, to have enough vertices to work with. Use proportional editing to add some pits and hills. Doing it manually gives you more control over the landscape. Use the Shade Smooth option to get that smooth look of the landscape surface. You can also add more displacement with textures using the Displace modifier or add some in the geometry nodes later on. Personally, I prefer the Displace modifier in this particular case, again, to have more control. Let's get to the nodes. Create a new geometry node tree with the landscape selected. Leave the geometry input and output connected as we're going to modify the source mesh. Look up for distribute points on faces node to generate a bunch of points on the geometry surface based on the density and seed settings. Use Join Geometry node to get the landscape back since Distribute Points on Faces converts the mesh into points. Instance on Points node will give us a possibility to instantiate any mesh on the previously generated points, which are going to be our grass instances. What we are missing here is the grass mesh and we're going to make a few of them with images created in any painting software. I'm using Krita as it is open source and free. Create a new square image like 124 by 124. I'll paint four different grass samples with black fill. Add a bit of white shading for color variation. The reason of creating these in black and white is to have control over the colors in the Blender software. Export the image to PNG with transparent background. Back to Blender. Create a new assets collection and hide it from the rendering. Inside assets collection you can create additional collections to store different types of meshes. For example, this one will contain different grass objects. Add previously created image with the help of images as planes option. Rotate the image accordingly and cut each grass sample with a knife tool. Adjust the pivot point for each mesh for it to be instantiated properly. To make an illusion of a third dimension, I will adjust each mesh to contain two rotated planes. Now I'm done with four objects or four types of grass samples. They already have a material applied, but I still make some adjustments to it. Crank up the roughness to maximum, plop the texture into the emission with strength set to 1, and use the color ramp to apply custom colors. Now hide the whole collection from the viewport and go back to the landscape with the geometry nodes. Drag and drop the collection with grass objects and plug it into the instance socket of instance on points node. Check the separate children, reset children and pick instance options. This way a random object from the grass collection is going to be instantiated on each point. We can randomize a few more options here. Like for example, apply random scale to each instance with random value node. Also, randomize rotation. 
use combine XYZ node to randomize rotation on the specific axes, like rotate on Z axis only. This input accepts values in radians, so to use values in degrees, simply convert this random value to radians with math node, like so. Now you may notice that all the instances look up no matter where they are located, but I want them to get tilted based on the landscape normal. And we already have such value in the distribute points on faces. Since it is a vector output, use the align Euler to vector node, which will manage the randomized rotation on the Z axis that we've said, as well as the normal or so to say direction of each point. This factor setting here will control the influence of the tilt. Apply material to the ground to finalize the look of the field. Add set material node, select or create a new material and adjust it in the shader editor. You can use a texture with grass pattern or a plain color as I do in this project. The noise texture with color ramp will add a bit of color variation to the ground. Another cool thing that we can do is to use vertex groups to create roads. In edit mode, select all vertices of the landscape mesh. In Object Data Properties, create a new vertex group and assign all the vertices to it. In the Geometry nodes, use Named Attribute node where you can select a vertex group. It should be available in the drop-down when clicked in the field. Use the output of this node as a selection for distribute points on faces. Now, when you remove the vertices from the vertex group, you will get grass instantiated only on the faces that belong to this vertex group. And I'm using C key to paint the selection of the faces. Again, we can use the same vertex group to influence the material. Add store named attribute before setting the material with this named attribute as a value. Name this new stored attribute and use it in the shader editor as a factor in the mix shader, which mixes two different principal BSDF or whatever you use for ground material. Color ramp adjusts the blend between those two. And now, whenever you select or deselect the vertices to be in the vertex group, both the material and instantiated meshes are updated on the landscape. You can even instantiate more meshes on the vertices that are included or not included in the vertex group, like rocks on the road. Use the same attribute, just invert it with compare node. Or add more vertex groups, more object variations and different collections to enrich your landscape. And that is it. Hope you found this interesting and useful. As always, the project file with all the models and textures is available on itch.io for free. So feel free to check it out. The link is in description. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you later. Take care. Bye bye.